up. So this is the part three. So we stopped at just now on the responding variable. We talk about the, uh, the dependency of the variables. Now, so we go into aim. Aim is basically just to investigate, okay, your relationship between your manipulated variable and your responding variable. Now, see, it's always the same. So to investigate the relationship between your manipulated variable and responding variable. So it's actually very simple. So if you do this tree correct, you will have gotten one mark, one mark, one mark. By just doing stating a variable, look at the experiment, state the variable, you really get three marks. And it doesn't stop there. Because you will get your manipulated variable and responding variable correct, you get additional one mark here, so that will be four marks. Now, normally figuring out the constant variable is not very hard. So I'll assume that you would know how to do this, and like that, you've already gotten five marks. Now, the people find the hardest on the apparatus and the diagram portion. Why? Because if you see, if you look at this diagram, this experiment just like that, probably you might not know how this experiment is being carried out, so you would not know how to do the diagram. Remember, when you look at a paper tree and design experiment, don't be too concerned or worried about whether if you have done the experiment before, if you have studied the experiment before. You write down your variables, think the variables true, and then you're going to write your inference, hypothesis, aim, and variables like that. And you get five marks. Okay? Now, since more or less you do not know how to do the experiment, then you will get this five marks. Now, but if you have a basic understanding that probably you've seen this experiment, but yet you don't know how the diagram looks like, it's okay if you lose these two marks. Okay? We go into the procedure. Procedure number one is always the same. The apparatus is set up as shown in the above figure. What about procedure number two? Now, for procedure number two, it's always on about the manipulated variable. You have to say a, a number for the manipulated variable and you're going to say how you're going to measure it. So in this experiment, my manipulated variable was pressure. So I have to think of a way how I can measure the pressure and I'm going to say a value for the pressure. So watch, in this experiment, the procedure, so you see, first one is apparatus and as shown in the above figure, which you don't get marks for this. Marks is always here, here, and here. So, I talk about the second one was about the manipulated variable, and you see here, the pistons is pushed until you get a pressure of 110. So you mention apparatus, you talk about how you do it, and then you mention the manipulated variable reading. So the first reading, okay, always remember to assess how logical this value is. For instance, if your manipulated variable is the volume of water, please don't say 20 liters of water, then 30 liters of water, because it's not logical, okay? Now, so this is the first part of the manipulated variable. On the third one, it's going to be your responding variable, okay? You're going to say again, how are you going to measure it using what? So here, my responding variable just now for this experiment was volume. So I'm going to measure my volume by using a syringe. So the volume here is measured using a syringe. So again, your apparatus, your responding variable, okay? With a scale on the syringe. So done. So one mark on the manipulated variable apparatus measurement, responding variable apparatus measurement. So lastly, you're gonna say you're gonna ex repeat your experiment. If you repeat your experiment, you're gonna repeat one, two, three, four times with four consistent increase. You can't say 110, 150, then 160, then 165, then 190. If every increase is 10, it'll be 120, 130, 140, 150. So it has to be consistent. So by doing this, it's actually not that hard as that you think it is, okay? So you just have to say about the repeat. So you get one mark, one mark, one mark on this. Remember, this is trying to make this to be simple, okay? You will probably lose mark on the apparatus side and the diagram side, which I did not discuss, but the other parts are all just variables. Variables, 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 variables. Talk about, about the variables, variables, and repeating readings. Finally, the last two marks is very simple. This and this. Now, see, uh, so you just have to draw a table. Don't have to fill in your manipulated variable, your responding variable, units. Okay, you need to fill in your manipulated variable here. Okay, which is the value that you have suggested just now. And then after that, leave your responding variable blank and you get one mark for that. Then finally, plot a graph of responding variable against manipulated variable. 
So this should be a graph of V against P. Alright? So here, this is how you should do it. Okay? Can as a responding variable against a manipulated variable diagram. So based on this, this is how our experiment should be done. You have one, two, one, two, three, four, five. Sorry, wait, sorry. One, two, three, four. Because your inference is one mark, two, three, four, five. For procedure, manipulated, responding, and you repeat. Okay, you get one mark. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if you can do the table, draw, manipulated against responding, you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine marks, which is very simple. You could probably lose mark on graph, it's okay. You lose mark on apparatus, you lose mark on diagram, but that's fine. Okay, so this is what we call a variable method. Now, sorry for that, this video is a bit fast, but I'll go through more of this during class. Okay, not to worry. If you face any difficulty, kindly comment at the comment box below. Thank you.